Um, here's what you do. If you want to get this movie made, Channing Tatum, okay? Let me tell you something right now. It's a little <laughs> secret. <laughs> Attach a female filmmaker. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. Okay? Hollywood is putting all these movies uh, made or, you know, developed by white guys on shelves. When's the last time you heard of, of Hollywood, like, pulling the plug or, or something like that on, like, a big high-profile female-directed project, you know? I don't know if I would have put it quite that way. I, I, I just, I really think you need to kind of play the studio politics game and, and, and get a female filmmaker in there, <laughs> not only because she could make your movie better, but I really think that, that studios are looking to make more films from film, female filmmakers, and, and it's one more reason to say yes. I, I agree with you on that. They definitely are, and they definitely should be, but not just, you just don't want to shoehorn a female no, director and just... just have a good take. Right. Well, but, like, I haven't heard them courting any female filmmakers for this, and maybe they should be. But also, when you say, like, how the studios have this bad thing to go on, the X-Men films in this iteration are a prime example. We had X-Men First Class. It was okay. Days of Future Past was great. Then we got to Apocalypse, and everybody was like, Why? And now we have Dark Phoenix about to come out this summer. And everybody's just like, so we're just going to remake the horrible third one from last time over again. So evidently Fox doesn't learn their lesson. You know, if they think that, oh, because of Fantastic Four, we can't do Gambit. Something else had to play a role in it. I really believe The head that. of Fox is, is out, first of all. Stacey Snyder's the head of Fox, and she's, she's leaving. She's not making the transition over to Disney next week. Um, I, I just feel like, why does Channing Tatum have to be the guy to direct this movie when there's so many other female filmmakers who have experience? You know, Channing has never directed anything. Like, uh... I much prefer the way you just said it just now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, maybe it just came out wrong at, at, at the beginning. Like well, the, the way it came across first is like, as much as I want to see more female filmmakers being at the helm of gigantic blockbuster properties, I don't ever want some some producer or someone heavily involved to think, oh, in order to get my monies, maybe I should manipulate what the hot thing is right now and just use a female filmmaker mm -hmm. and bring her in so that we can get the movie made. I just, I want the intention to be pure because also I think one way it leads to long-term change and opportunity and us having to stop saying, hire a female filmmaker and just saying hire a good filmmaker yeah. and the other way is just a quick band-aid and a recipe for disaster revolution you're totally right and that was well said perry i just think um i had the point again and then you and then you went off and i and i lost it i i, 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 yeah. I scrambled his brain I'll, I'll think of it in a second <laughs> all right i'll give you some time to think about it while i tell for everyone out there that at the very end of the show we are taking your live twitter questions so you know what start sending them in right now use the hashtag collider movie talk make them different make them fun don't send in the same question you sent in last time and we will have some good discussions at the very end of the show with you guys i thought of it all okay. right let's hear so you i mean you, you say that you you want pure intentions, yes. right? Okay, and, and and that's great. That's but that's wishful thinking in Hollywood. Of course, it's wishful. Okay, thinking. sometimes it, it's about results. So like, I don't really care about the why. You know, I care less about the why and why they're maybe hiring female filmmakers or diverse filmmakers, whatever, and just to you know, like results. I'm not an idiot. You know, you know I, what I, I mean? do know it's wishful thinking, and mm -hmm. I know like the purity that I come to when it comes to discussing the industry is, you know, it may seem because it may seem naive to someone and maybe not business oriented, but still, it goes back to what I said before. I really do believe that if it's not a like a manipulative, purely like money grab approach. That is the way that every, like everything all together rises. It's, this is just on my mind a lot because I just saw it, but a movie like Booksmart, when you hear about how a movie like that came to be, how Olivia Wilde just gained all that knowledge from producing, rose to the top, and then basically brought together this incredible ensemble and made a great environment, I really do think that approaching a movie like that is going to wind up reaping great results at the box office because I do think you could feel that radiating off the screen in certain instances you know what i mean yeah i listen i again maybe it came out wrong at first but i i, I just think that you have to play the game and, and and as a pure business decision i think it would make sense to hire a female filmmaker i think women are, are frankly used to working with with lower budgets and making them more with with less for bad reasons, because they were because they're given because they're given the less beginning and not exactly. And but okay, but if Fox is only saying we're only with. gonna you know this well, is see, how much money we have earmarked so for this project, and no I'm just happy to be here. I'm just happy to be here. It keeps film, female filmmakers within that box. Oh, because you always had to work with teeny tiny budgets. Let's force you to work with this teeny tiny mm -hmm. budget that doesn't compare to. I don't any think other anyone's making a Gambit movie on a teeny tiny budget, Perry. I think that they just can't afford to spend 150 million dollars on it. But still. 
Rachel, think of the importance of, let's say, when Ava DuVernay became one of the first black female filmmakers to get a hundred plus a hundred plus million dollar budget for A Wrinkle in Time. That's a really, really big deal. I know forty million, it's let's a, say, is not an it's amount a big of money milestone. But, but and, and this has nothing to do with her gender. But the movie didn't work. The movie didn't make its money back. So of, like, of course, the movie didn't work. But people have to start getting those opportunities and keep trying. We, in women order to make have to be hits. allowed to fail. Absolutely. Of course. Of course. I don't know where we got sidetracked on women no filmmakers. It was, just, it was just. Uh, I'm just very hands. happy to be the, here the today. The beauty of this, though, <laughs> is I really do think that there's some sort of balance between the way that we're coming at it right now, where you can just really respect what it means to mm -hmm. make a to make a film it's and make it well. It's all about who has the best take. I just think yeah. Channing could stand to give the reins to an actual filmmaker rather than trying to do it himself. I will end there and fully agree with that.